Well, I guess I'm taking out the dinette. Or maybe some of it, I don't know. Hmm. My name is Christina and I'm a DIY and decor blogger at the DIYMommy.com. Ever since we renovated our first camper in 2017, our family has loved camping. With the hope that we'll make memories in this new to us 2007 Jayco fifth wheel one day soon, I'm diving into a new camper renovation head first. Follow along with me as I share the whole journey of our DIY camper 2.0. All right guys, let's start this renovation the right way taking off these cornices, which I don't know why everybody put cornices on campers even now, but we're gonna take them off. If you watched last week's episode of our DIY Camper 2.0, that was my first episode. And at the end of the video, I did try to remove these cornices by hand, but needed my tools. So I am using my drill as well as a screwdriver to remove these cornices from on top of the window. They're relatively straightforward to remove, just quite time consuming. If you happen to watch our first camper renovation here on my YouTube channel, I will link to it down in the description box below. I started it a few years ago in 2017 and you might have noticed that I edited it quite tightly so I took out a lot of the issues and the oopsies and the things that went wrong in those videos which I think makes for a nice video and a well paced video but for this series I thought it'd be interesting to leave in a lot of the issues that I had and show you some of the things along the way that didn't go quite as planned because I think that is one of the magic things about YouTube is that we can show you all the behind the scenes things so that you know that it's completely normal to encounter all of these issues when you try your own DIYs and projects. And I hope in this way it encourages you to keep going even if you encounter issues. So I started taking these down with my drill but soon moved to my screwdriver because I didn't have a long enough bit in my drill. So again, a little bit of a longer procedure doing it by hand, but not hard just super time consuming. I'm also doing all of this work while all of my kids are at home. So I'm taking about three hours in the day when they're playing outside to go into the camper and work alone. My husband is an essential worker. He works in construction, so he is working right now while, while we're all home. So that adds a whole other monkey wrench into this project. But I do love to keep busy and I love projects like this, so it's a wonderful way to pass the time. I also removed all of the brackets from the cornices and the blinds around the window. This cornice above the kitchen sink was a little bit trickier because the screws were sort of hidden behind the blind. So I had to move it around a lot to be able to figure out where those screws were. I was considering saving the blinds from the camper, but when I saw how dusty and dirty and some of the mechanisms didn't quite work in them, I decided to toss those. And I'm gonna reuse the IKEA blackout blinds from our first camper and put them in this one. So here are all of those cornices totally out. This makes me so happy. I'm gonna to try to pull off this wallpaper border. I've read various multiple things about whether this is easy or hard, so let's give it a try. I think if I get a little bit of this edge, I might be able to do it. Oh, it's just the worst. I feel like all these is um baby pink or baby blue, main green, and gold. Okay. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Like sticker.
as you can see, the wallpaper left behind a really sticky residue. The adhesive was just plastered all over the walls after I removed it. So that's an issue that we're going to deal with next. I did find that using my utility knife to pry open a corner of the wallpaper border before I pulled it was made it a little bit easier to pull off the wall. Can you see it? My wallpaper injury. Oh. <laughs> I did smack my hand pretty hard there on, to, on the stove top, but I kept going. This wallpaper, oh man, you had to really yank it really hard to get it off of the wall. I have heard of people using a heat gun or a blow dryer to loosen the adhesive, but I guess my aunt tried that and she loosened the vinyl wallpaper behind the border, so I wasn't sure I wanted to try that. I went ahead and used this Goo Gone adhesive removing spray. Make sure you use the proper protection when using this. Just follow the directions on the bottle. So I sprayed the adhesive on the wall left behind by the wallpaper border and then left that on for about five to 10 minutes and then scrubbed it off with a paper towel. You can see all of that disgusting adhesive left on the paper towel and you can even see it on the wall here. I had to scrub away at it with a couple rounds of paper towel and then I used a rag and some dish soap to wipe away any of the excess. I was finally able to remove all of that wallpaper adhesive which I think is so important before you do any priming or painting of the walls in an RV. Incredibly annoying work but definitely necessary. I've been waiting for this yeah. It's been up on my mind Though it's hard to resist Feeling like one of a kind Oh, now the hard time's over I'm for a moment I won't look back now yeah. And it's moving closer I can feel it coming I really didn't like the construction of the dinette. It was just so flimsy. The storage was okay underneath the dinette, but the way that the drawer pulled out, the way that it looked, I just didn't like it. I was considering keeping this dinette, but when I saw that it was constructed just so poorly, even compared to our older camper, which was quite a bit older than this, I decided to try to maybe remove one of them. This was kind of something I did on a whim. Looking back, I don't know if I should have just kept going, but I was on a roll and decided it was gonna go. So I unscrewed all the screws, started removing it, uh, my vision as I was doing this was I was thinking of keeping the other bench on the dinette and then on this side I could just put a couple of stools or chairs because I feel like that would really open up this whole camper. My vision eventually in the second phase of this camper renovation would be to completely rip out the dinette and the couch and put completely new furniture here. Well, it appears that the um, jackknife sofa was attached to the dinette and I just pulled the dinette out and pulled the jackknife sofa down too. So, huh. Hmm. <laughs> There's some electrical in this bench, so I'm gonna leave that for my husband to safely fix for me and then I'm gonna take this out. I also wanted to experiment with these light fixtures up here. I thought maybe I could save the base plate of them and do some sort of boho or vintage thing to them. So I removed the glass cover on those and just kind of stared at them and thought of some ideas. Then I took off the cushions on this uh, bench on the other side of the dinette and wanted to remove this top piece here. 
And again, I'm thinking of keeping this and maybe reconfiguring the side to make it look a little more modern and chic. And then I was thinking perhaps I can cut down this cushion from the first bench and make it a back cushion for the second bench because I really dislike the fabric on these ones. So those are going in the toss pile, which is getting a lot larger than I originally planned. I don't know if I went too far here. Then I went ahead and grabbed the old handles from our first camper. They are perfectly good. And I think what I'm gonna do is spray paint these gold to match the vintage glam aesthetic that I want in this new camper. And luckily they were the same size as the current handles in the new camper. So I can just spray paint them and put them on the cupboards here. All right, next I'm going ahead and removing all of the doors from the kitchen cabinets because that's one of the first things I wanna do in here is paint this entire kitchen area. So removing doors is a great way to paint because you can paint the cabinet bases separate from the doors and make sure you do a really good job. I just used a regular screwdriver again to remove the doors, but you could also use a drill. Again, I just didn't have the proper bit for my drill. It needed to be a little bit longer than the one that I had. This is really easy to do. It's pretty straightforward, just loosening all of the hinges and taking off the doors. Here's a tip when you're painting kitchen cabinets or RV cabinets, make sure to take some painter's tape and a Sharpie and write down which door is which. And you can always move these to a drop cloth next to the door. This is gonna help you remember. Believe me, you'll think you're gonna remember where they all go, but in the end, you might completely forget. I tried to pry away at these drawers. Usually for most drawers, you can lift them up sort of and then pull them right out. These ones, I could not figure out how to do that. So all I did here was remove the hardware, the handles, and I'll probably just paint them like this right on the cabinets, but I'm gonna see, I'm gonna kind of keep experimenting and see if I can remove them all the way. I also decided to remove the cupboard doors on this side of the camper. I'm gonna concentrate on the kitchen and the dining area first, and then I'm gonna move on to the other areas of this RV. I think I want to try to salvage this couch. I mean, as much as I would like to rip it completely out and put in a brand new couch, for budget sake for this first phase, I'm gonna to try to um, try to just move it so I can paint behind it and then rebuild an arm for this side and then move it back. I don't know, it seems like it's gonna be really difficult to get out, so let's see if we can do it. I wish I could get a drill in here, but I can't. moved this jackknife sofa out of the way so I could paint behind it but considering it was so rough to remove it I'm having second thoughts about doing this in two phases where I do the floor later on maybe I should just do the floor now I don't know let me know what you think down in the comments below it was such a rough go removing it and now I have half the dinette removed anyway 
I'm considering rethinking my whole plan. I'm going to think about it this week and let you know my thoughts in next week's episode. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed this week's progress on our DIY camper 2.0. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all of the stuff I ripped out and what you would do if you were me with my flooring dilemma, whether I should just go ahead and do my dream flooring now or keep waiting until phase two. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. And I'll leave some more videos that I hope you enjoy up in the top left hand corner.